Good morning, YouTube. It is 5.45 on this Wednesday. Um, today's topic is uh, light matter. <laughs> Way too early. Or that Higgs chromosome space, the electrons, light. The magnetism of particles and momentum to receptors, radiation, our mathematics, a solution, asteroid. What am I doing up? Um, so, uh, light matter, what, what is that? Um, uh, it's, you know, as with a lot of thing in, things in physics, you know, physics is just so weird that when anything new comes along, uh, they may, like, correlate it to some, this other idea that the pu general public has a better understanding of. And so, in this article they read about for light matter, they, they correlated it, they... They sort of equated it to the idea, everyone loves lightsabers, right? And so in order to, and we've had a, an episode on lightsabers, we talked about that before. Um, to, to get a lightsaber, you need light to sort of bind together somehow, uh, or you need to constrain it. And in the episode before, we talked about constraints and how we could constrain light. Um, but a lot of times when we think of lightsaber, we think of solid light. Um, and so this idea of light matter um, sort of builds upon that, but, you know, a lot of times with these correlations, um, the actual physics behind it, uh, light isn't really binding together as matter this way, like in a light molecule is how they describe it. So, what's going on here? Um, they took, they took some rubidium atoms, rubidium is one of those elements on the chart, um, and they, 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 took a bunch of this gas and they cooled it down to super cool temperatures like a couple degrees above absolute zero um, absolute zero again is that level where the coldest the coldest that anything could ever get is called absolute zero and that scale is called the Kelvin scale uh, so zero Kelvin is like minus Minus something obnoxious Celsius. <laughs> it's super cold. It's the coldest in the universe. And so they can take this rubidium, these rubidium atoms, drop the temperature down to just a little bit above absolute zero. Uh, and they can shoot light through it. And so when, when you're that cold, your atoms are moving super slow. Um, and when you shoot light through it, um, I think... So the light that they shoot through it is already uh, super slow, and they do that by pulling as much energy as they can out of it. Um, and by shooting it through this super cooled rubidium, more energy gets pulled out of the light. And so they're shooting just a couple pulses of laser light, uh, really a photon at a time. Uh, and as the photon travels through this rubidium cloud, uh, energy gets pulled away from the, from the photon. Um, so, and then, you know, the, the photon exits the rubidium cloud at the other end in this super slow, super low energy state. Uh, and so what they did is they shot two photons at the same time into this rubidium cloud. Again, as the photons travel through, energy gets pulled off of, off of those photons. And as the two photons travel to, through, energy gets pulled off of each. Now what they're finding is that as the two photons enter they're two independent photons but as the two photons exit uh, they have a characteristic where they sort of they're, they're always together as they exit and they, they call they're calling that a uh, an interaction a lot like two um, two atoms may have an interaction to form a molecule these two photons they say have formed uh, sort of a a light molecule, um, and so that's why they're calling it light matter. Uh, as these photons, you know, travel through this cloud of rubidium, normally photons don't interact with matter, but as they bump into each of these atoms, energy gets siphoned off of them. There's interaction between light and matter um, at these cold temperatures and these slow speeds. So that's, you know, a new phenomenon uh, that you don't see every day. 
And because the two light particles are interacting with each other, which a lot of times light doesn't interact with each other, um, they're now calling this a light molecule. And if you can buy it, you know, if you can set up a bunch of these molecules, then you can form a, um, a lightsaber beam. <laughs> but this would be super cold as opposed to, you know, lightsabers, you know, super hot cutting through everything. Um, so, you know, the, the phenomenon at work with, with getting photons to travel through this cloud, I guess there's, there's some natural law that says if, if, if you got atoms in, in the space and you've got the photon, when energy comes off the photon to, uh, to the atom, the atom can only reach a certain energy state, a certain amount of, of energy uh, when it absorbs and that the other atoms around it cannot reach that same energy state. And so in order for, and this is where I get foggy on this principle because it hasn't really clicked in my head yet, but if this photon goes through, uh, energy, energy gathers in this atom, atoms around it can't gather energy to the level that this has, and then a second electron or a second photon comes through and it's giving away its energy uh, if there's an atom here it can't get energy off the second photon enough to reach the level of this atom and so this first photon needs to pass through before this photon can pass through yeah, I, I'm still trying to, to figure that out, but they're saying that because of that principle, the two photons sort of uh, stay together. And I think the article is leaving out a lot of details because I can't get from that, I can't get from, uh, you know, atoms not being able to, to, to absorb energy the same as another atom nearby to the fact that the photons are, are now coupled together um, or linked together in, into a light molecule. So I need to go find more articles. It, it's so recent that not much has been written about it. And a lot of times what you find with articles on the internet is that if you go to space.com and then you go to nasa.com and then you go to like um, gizmo.com you know, all these all these different websites will have the same article reprinted, which doesn't help me because, you know, if I didn't get information in one article and I'm looking at another article, it's the same as the first. It doesn't give me any more information. Uh, and so I'm trying to, I'm waiting for, for different articles from different authors not reprinted from other websites uh, to provide more information so I can read into what's going on with that energy transfer at low temperature. Um, that's really where the key is. Um, but, you know, I'll, I'll take, I'll listen to the physicists and I'll give them the benefit of the doubt. They say that the two, f the two photons are interacting with each other, uh, which, you know, doesn't happen in normal, normal speeds of, of photons of light. Um, so there you have it, light matter. Um, will this lead to a lightsaber? Not anytime soon, uh, but it'd be cool. Uh, learning more about light, uh, understanding that we can get light to interact with itself with other photons. So, all right, I gotta head off to work. You gotta go do whatever it is you do. Uh, we'll talk to you tomorrow.